Rule Omega is actually a really simple practical thing that I, towards coherence, that I would like everybody here to get is if, if Jordan and I are talking, or if you and I are talking, like we, we have this, and I think we naturally have it, but it's worth making explicit, is if you say something that sounds ridiculous to me, or batshit crazy or wrong, I actually give the benefit of the doubt that you might have a reason that I didn't understand first. So rather than just default into you're probably wrong, I'll ask more questions. Mm -hmm. and, and that giving the benefit of the doubt that you actually might have something useful to say mm -hmm. increases my making sure that I understand you before I'm responding. And that actually, and the disagreeing with something that you weren't even saying because I didn't seek to understand well enough creates very turbulent flow rather than laminar flow breaks down coherence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If people could just do that yeah. towards coherence, if they could just give the benefit of the doubt that each other, that everyone has some signal, yeah. even if it's on a very different part of reality than the part they're focused on, and even if there's noise involved, and they're listening for the signal first, right. that would change everything. That's a starting it. place. So Daniel expresses something, and let's say he's trying to express something that's hard, which by the way, the rule of making is designed for that kind of a thing. I'm not interested in having conversations that aren't actually trying to break new ground. So, okay, do it, dude. So he expresses something hard. And in the expression, 98% is noise and 2% is signal. It's like the jazz riff. But what happens is, is that my job is to actually do two things. One, hold all of it. Not just say, fuck it, that, was, that wasn't 100% right, so I'm just going to nuke it. Hold all of it. Then, in myself, discernment, to what degree can I express something back that gets rid of the 50% 50, 50 that is noise. So now I've got 6% signal, express it back. And of course, if he can then do that, and now you, three is even better, a more profound instrument, because you're gonna be bringing a different perspective. Perhaps you can take it and actually zoom in on it down to the point where we're actually 50% signal. That's the idea, right? And so one, it's an invitation to say, hey, we're trying to do something that's hard. Let's all try to do something that's hard and be willing to take the risk of not speaking elegantly and on the premise that everyone else is doing their absolute fucking level best to hear that which is trying to speak itself through you and listening to themselves like, oh, there it is, tone, got it. There's something beautiful and clear there. Here's what I heard. And that's really mega. And there's a psychological safety that's created to be able to try out new stuff, knowing that we know we're trying out new stuff and we're giving the benefit of the doubt. So it, it actually does become more explorative and that's where you get more novelty. <laughs> and then I imagine, actually I don't know if this is true for Daniel, I imagine it's true for you, but certainly if it's true for me, is that I'm also noticing in myself like this constant, you know, when you're meditating you feel this, this constant chatter and flow of like all the things that are going on internally that are either like certain ideas are popping up or emotional responses. Some of them are like social emotional responses. Some of them are like, just like I gotta pee. And like being able to actually notice all that chatter internally and do the discernment interior and say, okay, but all that chatter, what's that part of that's actually signal? Oh shit. But listen to all of it. You have to have, you have really make it goes in and out, right? I'm listening to myself fully and I'm listening to the, to the others fully and trying to use discernment to continuously allow that process to turn lead into gold. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Now, there's a really important distinction that we're saying something that is different than the way that some people think about multi-perspectivism, which is we're not saying, I'm not saying, all perspectives are equally valid. And I'm also not saying that there is no way to integrate them into higher order understanding. I'm saying all perspectives have some signal, mm -hmm. generally have some noise, <laughs> And that perspective is itself a reduction of information on the reality being perceived. Mm. And that's from, the, actually... from the quantum foam of it all. Mm.